Greetings, dear viewers. This is a Poker Stars Play Money Sit and Go tournament, which is a lot slower than the Beat the Clock tournaments you've seen me playing in my most recent Poker Stars videos. Figured this time I would put up something a little bit more long form because you folks do seem to be enjoying the poker videos and there have been at least a couple requests for longer, uh, longer content in regards to poker. I'm sitting at 2-4 on the button. I'm, of course, not going to play that, so I'll fold this out. For those who don't know, a sit-and-go tournament... <laughs> a sit-and-go tournament is a tournament that you sit down in and you just go. You start playing. The idea is everybody starts with 1,000 chips. I bought in for 10,000, and I believe the top three places, the the, uh, the last three players standing, uh, cash out. They uh, They place in the tournament. First place gets... The biggest payout, second gets the next biggest, and I think third gets their money back. So I think if I get third place, I'll win 10,000 chips and break even. Whereas second, I'll get more, and first, of course, you'll get, uh, I'll get the most, uh, as far as the payout is concerned. I'm going to fold 8-5 here. Uh, so yeah, your objective is just to knock everybody out, and every 10 minutes, I believe it is, it says up here, in 8 minutes, the blinds will go up to 15-30. So in every, uh, at every 10 minutes, the blinds will increase in size, so you can't just sit here forever and just wait out the best hands for the longest period of time, eventually the blinds will get to the point where it's taking a huge chunk out of the shorter stacks on the table. So what you want to do is you want to get to uh, at least a medium to medium high, if not drastically high, amount of chips as early as you can in one of these tournaments. And then you can kind of try and just ride it out for a long time. But, you know, it's not like a beat-the-clock tournament where that that period of time to do all that is so drastically condensed that you're going all in all the time. You can actually apply some strategy, some skill to this uh, type of tournament. All right. So here we go. Let's actually get talking about the play. I haven't gotten the opportunity to take a look at how my opponents are actually playing because of the intro that I've been giving at this point. But here we are. I'm sitting in late position. I folded this hand. And I didn't get to quite see how this is playing out, but it looks like this player right here is already chipping up to a fairly decent amount. This is this is okay. It's early in the tournament. We don't have to worry too much about it. I'm still sitting at the thousand chips that I started with. I've got queen six suited. Uh, two off the button. We got call call uh, against this many players. Queen six suited is not really that good. I'm gonna go ahead and fold. I don't really want to get invested in a hand that relies on two diamonds hitting on the flop or more for me to have a good chance at winning it against this number of hands. The likelihood that you're going to get two diamonds on the flop just like that is, uh, is is not favorable, even if it is for just a small number of chips that you have to try it out. And we see we've got three hearts here. Uh, so that's a scary board. King, ace, three, all hearts. Yeah, that's a very scary board. Difficult to play on a board like that. Jack, seven suited. Um, still fairly weak hand. It's not something that I want to play. I'm in middle position at this point. That's not a strong position whatsoever to play a very middle hand like this. I'm going to fold. I've got a razor. The player to my right. Everybody on this side of the table has folded. And nobody really wants to play that particular hand. All right. Now we have a hand that is definitely worth playing. We've got ace-king. They are off suit. It's not suited. But we do have ace-king here. And that's fun. Uh, this guy is raising again. What I can do now is I can raise over him and try and eliminate a lot of these hands. But I don't know that I want to do that. I'm actually going to call and see if we can get anybody else calling at this point. I kind of want players in the hand because I want this, if it hits, I want this to get as much value as possible. And if it doesn't hit, I, at least I didn't raise and lose more chips, right? Okay, so we've got a really strong hand here right now. This is an extremely strong hand. A jack makes me a straight. An ace makes me top pair. A king makes me a good pair with a good kicker. Uh, a diamond makes me a king high flush. So, of course, we're going to call this. We're going to just call those bets. And now we have even more options for straights at this point. Uh, 9, 10, jack. Well, we still need a jack. So, we're still going to need a jack. We're going to call. We're going to keep calling. We're going to see what happens here. I feel like I'm behind at this point. There's the jack. So, I have a straight now, which is probably still going to win. I think I can bet for value here because it's really unlikely that someone hit three diamonds on the flop, especially if I'm holding on to one to make a flush on the flop. There's less, there's about a 1% chance of that actually happening. So that means I probably have the best hand here. I'm going to go ahead and raise this to, uh, I don't know, 360 and see what somebody, oh, there's a caller right there. All right, here's my straight. 
player shows Queen King. <laughs> okay, then. I just had a much better hand in that case. So I do win at this point, and I have Jack King both offsuit at this point. Uh, it's called the Bachelor Hand. And I'll let you guess why Jack King off is called the Bachelor Hand. But I'm in early position. Uh, I do want to... It's kind of a weak hand against this many players, but I'm not going to fold this. But I, I'll go ahead and raise for 100. And we'll see what happens. I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get too strictly uh, invested in this hand, but this hand is worth a raise. So go ahead and raise. Okay, well there's 420 right there. That's an all-in. The chances that they have an ace is actually pretty good. I don't want to give up this lead that I have because I raised and then they raised all-in. The chances that they have a pocket pair, I think at best right now I'm at 50/50, and I don't want to I don't want to risk that. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold at this point. I'm not sure if folding Jack King off at that point is uh, the best was the best play. Now here I have Ace Five suited. I'm gonna call. I'm in early position. It's dangerous to play with a hand like this, but an Ace is very strong, and if it's suited, it's also very strong. Plus, it also has the potential to make the wheel with a two, three, and four if those come out on the board. We do have a raise and a raise right here. Now, if I call here, I have to, I have to do so knowing that I'm gonna be in early position. But I'll go ahead and call this and see what the flop looks like. We got a diamond. We got ten jack. All right, this doesn't look good for me. I'm gonna go ahead and check, and I'm just gonna fold to any bet. There's gonna be some betting. There's definitely gonna be some betting with the way that the pre-flop played out. There's an all-in bet right there. There's a call right there. I'm gonna fold. I'm most likely already beat. Yeah, there's queens. There's ace nine right there, and this player is looking to make his flush. Doesn't make the flush, and the uh, pocket queens take it. Okay, so that player has already been eliminated. We are down now to eight players at this, uh, well, once was a nine-player sit-and-go. Four-five suited. This is actually a deceptively strong hand. Uh, it's also, you, okay, I call it a deceptively strong hand, but don't go thinking it's an, an enormously strong hand or anything like that. It's It's got merit there because it's both suited and connected. It's four-five and it's suited. And there's plenty of action going on with a hand like this. That's exactly the kind of action that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and call. You want multiple players in uh, with a hand like this because this is the kind of hand that makes flushes, straights, full houses, really strong hands that are very difficult to beat. I'll go ahead and check. And whenever you have that, you want to get in cheap, and it only cost me 40 additional chips. So it was cheap to try and win 300 or so. So that's ex that was, an, a, that was a, an ideal situation at that point. Now, okay, there's a raise right there. If that person had called for 40, I would definitely be in. But because there's such a big raise, I'll fold out of this. But that was an ideal situation pre-flop for that hand. The flop didn't actually favor me. There is a heart, of course. And it is one of the cards that I would need to make a wheel. So the ace was kind of cool. But for the most part, the flop didn't really favor me. So I'm going to go ahead and get out at this point. There's another heart right there. Now, note that even if another heart falls on the river, we're not going to feel, we're not going to lament folding this. You should never, okay, first of all, you should never really lament folding uh, if you feel like you made the right play at the time. That's how you have to look at it. Secondly, even if I did make a flush with four or five, it's only a five high flush. <laughs> so there's that. You got you to gotta think about that kind of stuff. Bigger flushes are possible in that scenario. So it's it four or five suited is one of those hands that's very tricky to play, but it can be played very well. We have an all in from the button here. I'm not gonna call it with ace two. Even though I have an ace, that's not nearly enough to play uh, in this case. So the sevens have the sixes drastically dominated and with that seven on the turn, there was no chance that this player could possibly uh could possibly win that hand. Okay, so we can see the chips beginning to shuffle around now. They're shifting around. This player is left now with 100 chips alone. Only 100 chips. They're probably just going to push all in at this point. I'll fold. It's only 7-3. Uh, so I can't really fight back at this point. Although that is fairly random for a hand. This player really should call this. Uh, so there we go. Ace-5. There we go. Ace is a really good hand against 9-5. Obviously, Ace-5 having 9-5 dominated. And they're actually going to split the pot at this point. So this player gets to survive for a little bit longer. He actually made a five chip profit at that point. 8-10 uh, offsuit, a hand that I'm just not going to play even in late position. I'll just go ahead and fold out of that. Now in less than one minute the blinds go up to 15-30 increasing the uh, the amount of pressure on the smaller stacks and the amount of pressure on everybody at the table really but the, number, the amount of pressure on smaller stacks increases uh, as the blinds go up. So you want to keep your chip stack building and I tend to open up a little bit more as more and more players get eliminated. I have queen 10 here. I'm going to go ahead and call. It's a moderately strong hand, and I'm only two off the button. 
So I'm not raising. I'm just going to call. I'm going to see if I can sneak into this pot and hopefully nab a queen 10 drop or something on the flop right there. Now this player hopefully will check. There's a check right there. Okay, 538. A lot of players got in on this hand. There's two diamonds there. A lot of players got in on this hand. I think I might be able to steal it. Uh, those those don't look like very connected cards. I'm going to bet the amount of the pot here. Oops, I hit check. Oh, this is the wrong button. I wanted to bet 110, and I have a feeling this player would have folded. If this player checks, then that, I know that clicking check there on accident. Oh, wow, there's an all in there. Well, I'm not playing at this point. Maybe that accidental misclick of mine saved me 110 chips. Note that if I had bet here and this player went all in, I would just fold. Uh, so I wasn't under any real danger uh, at this point, but... I mean, I might have saved 110 chips there, but the play was to bet that 110 to try and steal the pot. And that's what I wanted to do. Unfortunately, I misclicked. Uh, king six, we will be folding king six right now. Players, for the most part, seem to be fairly tight at this table, which is cool. <laughs> this player is barely hanging on right here. 135 chips. He's, he's still, he's still chipping up barely. What they say in poker is true. All you need is a chip and a chair. It's very possible to uh, play from a low stack, from a low chip stack, and work your way through gambling and through skilled play back to a big stack. And we might actually see that from the player to my right here. Flop comes ace, six, five against these two blinds, or for these two blinds, who are the only ones remaining in the hand at this point. Small blind is betting out. Big blind is just calling. Small blind better not check here. You might as well just put the extra 160 chips in. I mean, what are you going to do? Check and then fold if he bets? No, you've invested too much. There's a 120 bet. There's a race to all in. And, of course, small blind is going to call. And let's see who wins it. The ace, the pair of aces wins that hand. Okay, so the jacks get knocked out. Another player has been eliminated from the tournament. I'm sitting in the big blind, having invested 30 chips already. With the small blind to my right. Needing to complete at this point for another 15 on top of the 15 that he's already put in there. He's raising all in. I've got 9, 10. I'm going to go ahead and fold this. These two players are probably going to fight it out because I opted to put that 30 in anyway. And it's not a whole lot more chips to try and get back into the pot. This player might fold. I don't think this player is going to fold, actually. They seem to be doing okay. They seem to be doing fairly well. They're capable of making calls like that. All right, so now we have two players. That's two uh, sets of hands there. Whole, two sets of whole cards there that could beat this player. All right, so this ace king sitting here with a king on the flop. Uh, it's impossible now for this player to win in that uh, hand. So now the number of players has thinned down enough to the point where queen nine suited is actually a fairly strong hand in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and start raising. I'm going to raise this up and see if anybody wants to play with me. This player has uh, enough chips to begin hold, uh, has enough chips that they can hold on for a little while longer. But when those uh, blinds increase, it's going to be really dangerous for them. All right, so there's two hearts on the flop. This is favorable for me. There's a bet right there. I'm going to go ahead and call and hopefully spike another heart. There we go. I now have a queen high flush. Only a king with another heart in his hand is going to be enough to uh, win the pot for him. And if I, if he has king, if he has king something of hearts, king and then any other card of hearts then i'm just gonna have to lose chips here because there's no way i i'm not gonna call that bet right there so uh let's go ahead and well i'm not gonna call i have to raise to go all in here and see what happens raise over the top and let's see what they do let's see if they're capable of folding this if they are capable of folding this then uh okay yeah, there's a jack okay jack of uh hearts the jack high flush versus the queen high flush i do take it down okay so there we go three thousand chips that's exactly what i was looking for and now we're sitting with eight, nine, one off the button. There was really only one set of hands. He says, nice hand right there. Let's go ahead and take this over and says, thank you. I'll then say, thank you. Nice hand. Good luck. There we go. Click. Okay, now it's to me. I'll go ahead and fold. I'm going to be sportsmanlike about it. He was very, he or she was very sportsmanlike about that. So I'll go ahead and return the sportsmanlike conduct. Mm, eight nines what I folded okay so we have fewer players at the table now I'm now chip leader at this point with 3,000 uh, just about doubling the second highest stack a little less than doubling the second highest stack and a little more than doubling the third highest stack so uh, we're in pretty good position at this point to hopefully place in the top three only three more players have to get eliminated here and we can see three players are fairly low stack 865 915 and 885 in five minutes the blinds race to 2550 which will begin taxing those smaller stacks much harder so they're going to have to start gambling pretty soon which puts them in a position to either win quickly or lose quickly so 
we're going to start seeing the action really kick up at this point. This player bets 390 into this one, uh, into this player over here, uh, to their, to their left. DFH now being put in a position. Yeah, okay. I think that's an okay fold, maybe. I, don't, I really don't know what they were holding. I wasn't paying too much attention. All right, we got King Queen suited here. Pretty strong hand. I'm two off the button, which doesn't mean a whole lot. It's mid position with this many players at the table. But I will go ahead and raise to 120. We don't want to let people get into this hand cheap. We don't want people calling with things like, like eight nine or something like that, which can be dangerous to this hand. All right, so King Queen suited takes it. Uh, pre flop. Queen four offsuit. Obviously, we're gonna fold that. We're not gonna sit around and wait. Uh, we're not. We're not gonna get into a, a flop and then uh, hope to hit something amazing like queen four four or anything like that. The chances of that are just way too unlikely. So we're not gonna play that. <laughs> Although king five five does drop, so yeah, you know, if you've been holding king five and folding it because it's not likely, then that drops. You're just gonna be like, oh, I can't believe I folded. Actually, never. If you do fold king five offsuit pre flop. Don't feel bad about that. It's the right move. You have to think about it in terms of statistics. So uh, you made the right move pre-flop if you folded king-5 offsuit, even if king-5-5 five five drops on the flop. It's one of the ways you have to approach poker. All right, so I'm in big blind. Everybody's folding. Uh, the uh, button decides to call for 30. Now, I'm not sure if that's a slow play. That's kind of suspicious in my opinion, but I do have a suited jack. It's only 30 more to attempt to get in. If this player raises, I know that we're out... Okay, and then move just definitely fold. All right, so small blind's gonna have to decide what to do at this point. I feel like Julio might have a weak king, so I'm gonna actually gonna bet a little bit here. I'm just gonna. Oh, sorry. Oh, I meant to bet. Uh, I called that player. Didn't mean to do that. Oops. Okay, so this player might check. That was a small bet that they made on the flop, but I probably just gave them another 90 chips. I wasn't paying attention to their action. I do have sound turned off for myself right now. Because I don't want to, I didn't want to wear my headset, so I just turned off the sound on my speakers so that it doesn't come through the microphone. So, uh, oh, what are you doing? Why are you waiting so long? A 30 bet? Okay. Um, I don't think I'm going to win this hand, but it's 30 for 360. I have to try and at least spike a jack for 30. So here we go. Uh, obviously I can't make a flush or anything like that. Okay, so there's another 30. I feel like they're just bleeding me of chips. Extremely good play at this point. Um, my only real chance is to, go all in over the top and get them to fold, but that would be way too many chips to attempt to to attempt that. So I actually have to fold there despite the fact uh, really what it was is that misclick put me in a position where I had to call and and then uh hopefully spike something on the river. It was the misclick that did it, honestly. Uh might have folded right there if I had known they had bet ninety. I could have bet in that spot, but I wouldn't want to call in that spot, which is what I ended up doing, just because of a misclick. Anyway, let's go ahead and complete. We got 3-2. Pretty weak hand, honestly. And there's a check right there. I did hit, I did hit a 2, so I'm going to go ahead and bet 30. Uh, because I do have a pair. I have a bottom pair at this point. Uh, they called it. Okay, 2, 3, 4. Uh, let's go ahead and bet another 30. They might have a 10 if they call this. Then they probably have a 10. Okay, um, let's go ahead and make a pot size bet of 180. Just in case my two is good. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to pressure them. We'll get them to fold. They seem to make small little calls, drawing for something, looking for something in their hand, and I'm not sure they made it, which is why I made a pretty big bet there on the river, despite the fact that I only had a pair of twos uh, when, it, when it went ahead and made a 180 size, uh, a pot size bet to try and pressure them. Now I've got 9-10 offsuit on the button. Pretty okay hand, honestly. Um, we can see what this brings, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and fold, actually. Why why risk it right now when this player's got low stack? I don't want to give this player an opportunity to triple up, so I'll just go ahead and get out of the hand with something like 9-10. Ooh, ace-2-3 of spades drops. Many possibilities here. Oh, ace-2-3, and then a four of clubs. Still many possibilities. There's possible straights, possible flushes, possible straight flushes, and now even more possible straight flushes. There's a straight on the board. Anybody with a spade, though, will win this hand. There's an eight of spades right there, so this player has an eight high spade. If this player had a higher spade, then he would won it. But we see uh, as things played out, this player does actually end up getting some chips. Player to my left. Alright, so Jack-7 offsuit, not going to play that. The blinds are going to go up to 25.50 in less than a minute, and that's going to put pressure on these two players right here. I can kind of sit back and let these players duke it out. One good thing about being oh, the chip leader in a sit-and-go tournament is that you're holding on to the chips 
And as the blinds increase, that means the more chips you have, the fewer chips there are among the other players to fight for. So if you play really conservatively until the bubble pops, and the bubble means, um, when the bubble pops, it means the fourth player, uh, player that went out fourth goes out. Which means, uh, only the players who are going to take money out of this tournament, or, you know, win the tournament in the top three, are, are left. That's what it means for the bubble popping. You don't want to be the one who pops the bubble. But anyway, uh, when you're a chip leader like this, you can just hold on to as many chips as possible until you get wait for premium hands, and that gives fewer chips for the other players to uh, fight for. So I'm going to go and fold, which is why I'm only playing premium hands now. The 2550 blinds are kicking in. Still not enough to put extreme pressure on the lower stacks, which is 865 and the... Uh, 795 at this point, but it is enough pressure to make them really start thinking about the hands that they play. One other thing that I really like about the blinds going up and being chip lead is that it puts more money in that pot for my premium hands, which is what I'm waiting for at this point. We got an all in here from this player and a fold right here. Um, no telling what that could have been. All right, I'm in big blind. I'm going to check fold here. I'm not going to invest any more money than what's in the blind right now, uh, than what's in the big blind. The 50 chips that I've already put in there. I've got 10 6. Hopefully I get to get in here with a check. Hopefully the dealer doesn't uh, raise. Okay, there's a slight call right there. Okay, so we got uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. An eight will make me a straight, and I don't think this player hit anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and bet a hundred pot size. Maybe I can steal it. I can kind of bully this player around a little bit. Yeah, I'll go ahead and pull a uh, pull a pot steal right there. I did have some outs. Obviously, I had an eight that I could hit for a straight. Uh, but because this player is low stack, they don't want to get involved with someone with me with with a stack like mine, uh, with some with a player like me who had three thousand chips. Uh, there's a raise right there. I do have an ace. Uh, I'm just going to unfold it. It's ace two. It's a weak ace. I'll go ahead and fold right there. Um, and the only other player was the other low stack. Why would I volunteer my chips to go to either one of those players, right? Unless I had something like ace king or a premium hand. No reason. No reason to give them the opportunity to win from this stack. I'm going to go ahead and fold. And we're going to let this player hopefully knock out this player because this player actually opted to go in. DFH opted to go in. We've got a raise of 650. That was a call right there. And then two kings on the flop. This could mean a lot of things right now. There was a check. This player is probably going to put 205 in. You have to fold poker, Ali, 38. You have to fold. You have no choice. You've got to get out at this point. You have to fold. That player's got a king. It's clear that player has a king. Oh, there's a call right there. Oh, no. Okay, there's queen 10. Ace 5. The ace 5 is ahead. Okay, the ace wins it. All right, so this player does get knocked out. I would have folded there. He play, he was playing like he had a king, which is a smart play because it would have gotten a player like me to fold out, and then he would have won the pot. Pretty good play on his part. Pretty good play on his part. So, you know, there's some things going on there. All right, so there's now uh, five players remaining at the table. King 3 offsuit. I'm going to go and fold. One position off the button. And we do still have two low stacks right now. Seven minutes until the blinds increase to a point where these two players will not be able to withstand uh, the, the dealer button moving around and having to pay blinds every round. In seven minutes, these two players are going to be feeling extreme pressure. And with every hand that passes, more and more pressure builds up because their, their chip stacks are still dwindling, even with the um, 2550 that we have going on right here. And I'm always very interested whenever this player or this player get involved in a hand. Uh, it seems to be that Poker Ali at this point is the one kind of bullying people around, trying to build up their chip stack to try and compete with mine. Whereas this player over here, oh no, this player did one. Whereas this player over here seems to be adopting my uh, my strategy of play. They're just holding back, trying to let the small stacks duke it out. There's five players left. Two more need to get eliminated. There's a call here from the button. Could be a slow play. There's a bet. Now, if this player calls, they have to have a king. Okay, yeah, because there's really not much to draw for right here on that one. So that was, that was either going to be a one hand right there or a fold. So they folded. 6-3 suited. We're check folding. We're not playing this hand unless we can get in for a check. And then hopefully we get something like 3-3 three, three, ace. That would be amazing because uh, if somebody has an ace, then they just fall to my trips threes. Seven five king. Alright, we're checking here. I'm not gonna play against this player. He doesn't seem to want to play against me. Five, six, seven, eight. I don't have my straight. We're just gonna check it. He's probably gonna check too. There's a bet right there. I'm folding. I didn't have anything that I could play with. A four would have been great. <laughs> uh ace five right here against this player. Actually kinda strong, but this player's actually in right now, so I gotta be careful. 
the ace kind of tempts me to want to play, but I've got a weak kicker, so let's just go ahead and get out of here. I'm not even going to complete the bet in case this player has some sort of uh, really good hand and can go all in. I probably should have completed the bet, though, honestly. I may have missed some value, some some expected value here. Check, check. But like I said, I'm just sitting it out as chip leader. Why would I volunteer chips to the low stack right here? Low stack does end up losing another hand. All right, king-10 suited, five players. It's a pretty strong hand. I do want to get involved in this one, even if this player does end up calling. Okay, that player folds. Now, I've... I've folded out of enough hands that this should be a scary bet for them. I'm going to put 200 in there. This player folds. Uh, this player, Both of these players should have seen what I've been playing with. Uh, so let's see, there's a check right there. I'm going to go ahead and bet. Let's go ahead and bet 400. Make it look like I have an ace. Oh, they called with that. Okay. That's fine with me. I'll go ahead and check at this point. Probably get me a, a free river card. A bet of 50. All right. So that's a... They're clearly trying to get me to call. But I have to call 50 to attempt to win 1275 with a pair of kings. There is no folding here. You have to call this every time. So there's a call, even though I'm pretty sure they have an ace. Yeah, okay, so they had two pair, ace and kings. All right, so that wasn't the best hand for me. Sometimes you're going to lose a few hands in poker, and that's perfectly fine. You have to uh, be willing to accept that. Now, to be fair, I didn't play that hand as well as I probably should have, but I feel like after I made the mistake of getting invested in a hand like that, I played it well post-flop, I think. Uh, because I was able to get good reads and things like that, and I didn't invest too much, and I made the call on the river like I was supposed to. So I think after I made the mistake, which was getting invested in a hand like that in the first place, in the position I was in, uh, that was the mistake. After that mistake, I feel like I played okay. Uh, so I'm really not too banged up about that hand. Waiting for this three minutes to tick by so that we can get that 5,100 blinds coming in. Everyone's playing very conservatively at this point. Now, I like how that player played the uh, ace-king, though. Oh, no, I don't like when the short stack wins chips. Looks like the, the stacks are evening out. All right, ace-10 is pretty good. I do want to go ahead and raise this again, because this is a pretty strong hand. Fold, fold. This player is calling. That's dangerous, because we know that they play only good hands, and they play the hands well. This player's got a very similar style to my own. All right, so I've got a 10. There's a check right there. I'm going to go ahead and bet 350 at this point. They're probably going to fold. Yeah, they're out of there. Yeah, I'm beginning to peg their play style a little bit, but I do end up taking down some chips. That's good. Ace-9, offsuit. Not that strong of a hand. I'm really interested in seeing what the dealer button does at this point. There's a raise. Are you going to play? You are going to play for 100. What are you going to do? Small blind? Are you going to put the extra 75 chips in there with your small stack? No, there's a fold. I don't think I really am going to do very well here with Ace-9 a lot of the time, but it is a 50. I do have 50 to call to try and win 275 at this point. So it's something that I'm going to get invested in with an Ace right here. And there are two spades right there. I've got a backdoor flush draw at this point. I also have top pair uh, with a good kicker. So I'm actually in really good shape right now. So I am going to bet the pot. Now, the chances that one of these two players has something like a high pocket pair is actually pretty good. But if it's over, is it over nines? It might be over nines at this point. So that's an all in. Um, that tells me they probably have trips or something like that. Now, this is why I'm going to fold this hand because they probably have something very strong as indicated by the all in. And they don't want to see another spade. They're trying to knock out any spade draws. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this. We're going to give that all in the respect that it deserves and just fold right out. Even though I did have top pair with top kicker and a backdoor flush draw, which is a strong hand, which is why I bet. And then I got uh, bet. Uh, I got raised all in, so I decided to go out of there. And that was my logic on that one. So here we have ace king. I'm going to do our usual 200 chip bet so that uh, we can disguise the strength of our hand. Okay, there's ace king right there. Again, we got a backdoor flush draw, a uh, backdoor straight draw, and of course we could hit an ace or king. Do pretty well. So this is kind of semi bluff at this point. I'm gonna bet 250 chips. Player folds out. Alright, I'll go ahead and take down that 500. As a, it was a semi bluff because I didn't have anything, but there were a lot of cards that could give me options or just a straight up winning hand to come on the turn and the river. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and fold out of here. So what we've just seen there in the past few hands is me playing a lot of marginal borderline hands, a lot of things that aren't necessarily clear how to play. Like obviously when you get queens, kings, aces, you get something like that, that's that, that's pretty easy to play, right? You know how to play those hands and you know how to fold the trash hands too. Like you know how to get rid of all that stuff. There are a lot of hands in poker that are just very easy to play. They practically play themselves. But the past few hands that I've played, 
Uh, we've seen them very marginal. They require a lot of strategy, a lot of thinking, a lot of paying attention. So I feel like those those previous few hands were really good uh, as illustrative of how to play poker uh, in a pretty clean, tight, effective way. At least I hope they were. All right, ace four of clubs. This is this is a dangerous hand, but I'm gonna go ahead and call. And uh, that's going to kind of disguise the strength of the ace if I just call. What I want to do is I want to spike a straight or a flush right here with a lot of players in the hand, which I might very well get. This player is going to have to start going. He might go all in right here, okay? He's not going to do that. All right, so now I've got trips fours. That's exactly what I was looking for with my uh, with my 50 chip call. It kind of disguises the strength of my hand. So I've got trips fours. I'm going to go ahead and check this because there's not really a whole lot that can come out that's going to scare me because the board is rainbow. For that, oh, and I've got now I've got a boat. Now there's really nothing that can drop to scare me at this point. If a player is holding on to a six, of course they've got sixes full of fours versus my fours full of sixes, which would be which would beat me. So there's that. But I don't think anybody is holding on to a six at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and bet the pot right now. Um, do hopefully do a value bet. And we got a lot of folds. Okay, so my fours, I got I had three fours right there, and it didn't really pay off for me. But you understood the strategy that I was going for there. Kind of scary for me to bet right there, actually. I might have just called. You know what? Now that I think about it, I probably missed some value. It was probably better for me to just check right there and let someone catch something on the river. Because if somebody did have a six, I was already beat and I was going to lose that 250 anyway. Um, but if I had won, they were just going to fold on a board like that, most likely. So I guess I should have just checked and waited for the river. Okay, anyway, uh, A7... Of hearts, I'm gonna go ahead and check this. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so kind of a good hand right here. We're gonna check. I'd really like to see another heart drop. Not a heart. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and check right here. I feel like I might have the best hand given the given the action. All right, so there's that. So let's go ahead and just bet a hundred. Now that I've hit an ace on the river, uh, have an, a pair of aces. This player might have a pair of aces too. Oh, there's a raise right there. Okay, we're getting out. I only had an ace with a seven kicker. I'm not gonna contest this player with that. The seven kicker is what made me get out of there. I didn't want to play uh, against a bigger stack like that. He seemed to be he seemed to be baiting at that point. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and call this. We're gonna complete that fifty with a king in our hand. Uh, nothing really dropped at this point, so I'm gonna go ahead and check. Nothing good for me right now. There's a check right there. This player's probably gonna bet. No, he didn't bet. I expected him to bet to try and take the pot. All right, so a queen would be good. That would give me a straight right now. Very small pot right now. Very, very small pot. Okay, there's a, there's a bet and there's a call. Now let's see. Well, it's it's 100 to attempt to win a $500 pot. Now there's not enough queens in the deck uh, at this point for me to feel satisfied in calling us. I'm gonna go ahead and fold. Not enough queens in the deck for there to be a good enough chance for me to spike my straight on the river uh, there. So I, I'd have to be getting much better odds for that. A uh, player with the tens does take it down. A pair of tens, not too bad. I didn't have anything to contest even that, so that's the position where I'm going to unfold. Now we see this player here has been just getting chipped down over and over, just getting poor hand after poor hand probably, and they are sitting at 495 chips right now, and it's it's at minimum a 100 chip bet to even get into a hand at this point. So they're extremely low stack. I'm going to go and fold, uh, but we are going to have to fight these other stacks right here if we do want to place within third, uh, within three places at this point. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this one up on YouTube, I think, even if I lose this tournament, because I feel like it was very illustrative of uh, playing some good, tight, solid poker play. Uh, even if I did make some mistakes, I feel like I've gone back and identified a lot of them and explained them, and I hope I explained them fairly well. But let's hope, let's hope we win this tournament anyway. But even if I do end up losing this tournament, I think I'll put it up on YouTube anyway. So there's that. All right, so let's see. We have... Queen 10 in the big blind. There's a call right there. This player's just gonna have to go all in at some point. Okay, he's not gonna go all in. There's a call from the button. I think what I'll do with Queen 10. No, I'll go ahead and check. This player is very vicious. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I'm gonna check. I'm in early position. Check right there. I don't know what they're gonna do. What I wanna hope. What I'm hoping for here is I'm hoping to see their hand if I check. Fours. Okay, a pair of fours. Okay. So that's so that's how they played that out. Very cool. It's good to see how that works. And they just called pre-flop with a low pocket pair, and then they checked their way to the river to see if they could win it. It's good to know that that's how they play that kind of hand. All right, I'm going to call because there's 300 in the pot. It's only 50 to me to try and uh, spike something silly like 338 or something like that. All right, I'm going to check. Uh, I'm going to fold to any bet. I'm going to click on that button. If there's any kind of betting, then I'm just going to get out of here. Uh, I don't. There's really too much on the board for me to feel comfortable playing at this point with that hand. 
Now we're on the button. Let's see what we have. Uh, not really that good. We're just going to go and fold to any bet here, too. I don't have any kind of hand that could knock someone out or something that I would feel comfortable playing. 3-9, another situation. Like I said, some of these hands just play themselves. You see a hand like that, you know to fold it. It's those marginal hands that really make the difference between a good poker player and a poor poker player. <clears throat> or even like a, like a great poker player and a good poker player, I'll put it that way. 3-10-5, jack. A lot of action going on. Ooh, we do have a call here from the low stack. What could they be going for? Possibly another heart. If they didn't hit that heart, they would have folded. Okay, they fold. Yeah, they were probably going for a heart draw in that case. They might have had some options. Didn't work out for them. We're folding 3-5 off. Oh, sorry, 3-5 suited, of course. This player is still getting chipped down by the 100s, uh, the 100 big blinds. Every time the dealer button goes around, they have to pay 150 because they have to pay the 100 and they have to pay the 50 after that. So they keep losing out on money or keep losing out on chips over and over there. They're eventually going to have to make a move or they're just going to be blinded out. There we go. There's that move. 495 all in. Are you going to contest that player? Thing about it is, if they do contest that player, they stand a chance of doubling them up. All right. So there's cowboys right there, the pocket kings. And this player actually just hits a flush on the turn to knock out the low stack. Uh, kind of a bad beat for that low stack right there, but that's how it goes. All right, so now this player is the most likely to pop the bubble. I have ace-queen right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and raise this to 400, threaten this player's stack a little bit. Uh, this is a really good hand to play with. Let's see if anybody else wants to play with me. There was a call and a call. This player does want to play with that amount of chips. Okay, then he checked over to me. I'm going to go ahead and bet the 1,000. Actually, no, that's a lot of, that's a lot of chips right there. I'm going to go ahead and check, see what they want to do. Check it over to them. Oh, there's a check there too. Okay. Check again. I don't have anything to fight with. I want to see a king. No, there's no king there. Let's see diamond, diamond, diamond. I have a fourth diamond right there. I'm just going to check it. I don't really want to fight out for this. Uh, I don't really want to risk my stack on a bluff at this point. There's no reason to do that when there's a player very low on chips. And I think I take it down with ace high. Okay. I do take the hand down with ace high. So that played out pretty well for me. I played it extremely safe right there, which was good. I'll go ahead and fold this. That gives me enough chips to sit back and wait for this player to have to make their move. So I think we're doing okay right now. The three of us just kind of need to work together almost. We're not really going to work against each other. We'll put it that way. We're not working together, but we're not working against each other either, I feel. Which is why there was a check, 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 check between us. Because we want this player to really feel that pressure. We want them to be the one to make the move. And hopefully the gambling will just... Uh, hopefully the gambling will fall in our favor and help to knock this player out. Or hopefully they'll make a mistake and get knocked out of the tournament at that point. Because you do want to be one of the top three. Now, even after we have three of us sitting here, we do still have to fight for second and first place. So um, what you want to do is you want to try and get to third at the very least. And then you want to open up and play some poker. Uh, which is what we've been doing this whole time, obviously. But that's kind of one way to look at it. Sort of, I think. <laughs> okay. So this player does fold 390 chips. They're on the button right now, so they don't have to pay anything. I'm going to go ahead and fold this hand. They can fold out of this, too. And they can wait for something big. Oh, they just call with 100, which is kind of silly. I feel like we're going to get somebody uh, contesting them there. You want to raise if you're going to be in. I mean, if you're going to put 100 in out of your 390 stack, that's most of your chips. And the blinds are now at 75. Oh, sorry. We'll, we'll soon be at 75 150, which is most of your stack. There's a 290, and there's a call right there. This player has a very good chance of winning right now. There's still a very good chance of winning. 100% chance of winning at this point. All right, so they do take that down. That player has been knocked out. Only the three of us are left, so we are uh, going to place in this tournament. I have a pair of threes here. There's a raise right there to 200. I'm going to call the 200, and we can see what happens. Uh, I'll check this. If they have a king, then I'm just going to go ahead and get out of here. I'm gonna, probably going to get out of here anyway, because that's a pretty small bet. Uh, actually, that was a pretty small bet, so I'm going to go ahead and call that and see what happens. I'm going to check right now. Let's see what they want to do. Do they want a free river card where they just kind of, eh, well, they're betting small, so I'm going to go ahead and call. Maybe I'll spike a three. Okay, no, I didn't spike a three. I can check this. See what they want to do here. Probably going to bet real big for value. Yeah, okay, they had a good hand. They had something good. They kind of strung a few small bets in there, getting me to draw, getting me to play alongside. But, you know, what? they were small enough that a pair of threes was still enough for me to call with, I think. And hopefully spike something. It was almost it was almost a mistake on their part. I feel like in the majority of the time, I might very well either break even or just win uh, the the pot in that case. I'm not, I don't want to play with nine four. I'm going to go and fold out of here. I'm not even going to complete the blind right now. We're going to see what these two want to do. That player is this player is now the low stack. We kind of want them to be pressured by the seventy five one fifty. Although that's still enough chips to play. They they're still a contender right now. 
But we're going to see what happens. I, I kind of like their play style, too. So they've got a small stack. It would be pretty good for them to be knocked out because their play style uh, is pretty so uh, pretty solid, pretty tight, I feel. So to get them knocked out, it's good that they're in a low position this one. All right, king three. King is pretty strong. We're going to go ahead and raise to 300. Uh, Three-handed with the king. Now, these players are probably going to call, especially this player with the bigger stack. And if he does, I might just have to make a move. I don't want to get chipped down at this point. So there's a call at this point. Ooh, ace, jack. Okay. You're probably going to bet. No, he doesn't bet. I'm going to go ahead and bet 500 right now. You're probably going to fold at this point because I raised. You called. Yeah, you don't have an ace. The ace is too scary. So I do take down a pot right there. That was a that was that was mostly a bluff on my part, but it does get me a 700 chip pot. Six seven offsuit. I don't really want to play that, but if he just completes, oh, he just folds it. Okay, so I take the 150. Gives me another round worth of chips, worth of blinds to just see some free hands. Uh, I'm gonna raise this hand to 450 to kind of show strength. That's a completely random hand for the most part. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take that down. All right, so I'll take the blinds down twice. And now it was a it was a weak hand, but he didn't know that. Uh, you can kind of open up a little bit. All right, so I have a I have an ace right here. Gonna raise the 450 with an ace. It's a weak ace though, so I got to be careful. Not they're not gonna have uh, weak to mediocre hands most of, or all of the time. That is all right. There's a raise right there. We're not gonna we're not gonna call a raise with ace two. I'm gonna show them that I'm capable of raising and then folding, which is important. They need to know that I'm capable of doing that because then you can uh, you can make plays if they know that. If they know that you're capable of folding, then you can make some plays. 5-8, we're going to fold this out. We want this player definitely to chip down more with these uh, 75-150 blinds, taking it out of them. 7-queen suited, that's a computer hand. I feel like it's going to win more than half the time. I'll go ahead and raise here. Maybe knock him out, maybe get him to fold. And then get this player to call me, hopefully. I am feeling like it's, it's almost going to be like a coin toss if this player does call me. As to whether or not I'll win this hand. Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and just get them to put the rest of their chips in. There's a call. A pair of sevens. All right. Uh, I don't really have a great chance at winning this hand, but maybe... Oh, okay. There's a ten right there to give me... Uh, wait, what did I actually get right there with that ten? Was that a flush? Let's check it out. Let's see. Hands, notes, stats, info. I couldn't identify that quickly. Oh, I with a flush. Okay, that's what I thought it was. That was a flush. Uh, it had to have been. All right, so I do end up taking that down with a gamble. I made a mistake. I ran into a pair of sevens. Uh, most of the time, I'm going to lose that hand. I make, I walk away from that hand with, with no, uh, un under no illusion that I made the right play there. I don't really think I did, but the gamble played off and sometimes it's going to happen. All right, I'm going to go ahead and check. All right, so I have a, I have middle pair here with a pretty good kicker. Let's go ahead and bet 150. See if they want to play. See if they want to play here. I got a middle pair. If they have some diamonds, maybe they're going to want to play. But I don't think there's a whole lot that they can actually draw to right here. If they raise me, it may very well just be to see if I have what I'm representing, which might be a 10. But they're taking a good long time to think about it. Now, we are in second place, so we're going to win more than our money back at the very least. And, wow, he's taking time bank? Really? What are you doing? This is This shouldn't be that difficult. Wait, are you going to sit out? There's no way. You're sitting out? What a strange way to... I don't want this to happen. I want you to come back. I want you to play poker. This is not how I want to win first place. Well, this was still a good video either way, I think. But you are sitting out, which means I could take advantage of that, but I'm going to let this tick down for a bit. I'm not going to just take his blind, take his blind, take his blind, take his blind. I'm not going to do that. I am going to do this, and I don't want to play with 8-3, so I'll go ahead and fold. He's actually going to win that hand sitting out because it's 8-3. Okay, now I have a pair of fours. Oh, it's auto-folding him now. Okay, well, so six, seven heads up is pretty good. I'll call it, and it's going to fold him. I don't. This is not how I want to win it. He's auto-folding. I'm just getting pot after pot. This kind of sucks. All right, I'm going to let this tick down some more. I'll let the uh, green bar go down. I need this player to come back. Let's see what chat says. He's actually not saying anything. All right, he's back. All right, he's back. He's not. It doesn't say sitting out anymore. Here it is. Welcome back. Gonna give him the welcome back, let him know that uh, we did play fair there. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and call. And we're gonna see what this player wants to do. I have 6 7, offsuit. It's a pretty good hand, heads up, because it's connected. Oh, we're gonna fold. I have a feeling this player has to go AFK, so they're just gonna keep all inning perhaps at this point to try and end the tournament as quickly as possible. Maybe they have to go to work in the morning or something. It is 5 44 a.m. I'm gonna check with 9 2. I've got a pair of twos right there. Uh, any pair, heads up, is pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and bet 300, which is the size of the pot. 
There's a call right there. 6-7. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and bet the pot again, because I don't think they have anything at this point. But I do have a pair of twos. Oh, there's a raise all in. Ugh, I can't play it, because it is just a pair of twos. Let's see, do I think they have any of these? Well, they could have hit their six, honestly, so let's go ahead and fold out now. I didn't like how that worked out. We need to get something a little bit more playable. No, we're going to fold eight six. We don't want to play with that. Uh, I need a hand that I can go all in with. This is actually pretty okay. There's a raise right there. I don't want to go all into a raise, though. I will call, because I do want to see what the flop brings. All right, I have a jack right there. Let's go ahead and max out right there. Hopefully they don't have a king. I'm playing on the odds that they don't have a king. All right, cool. I have a really good chance of winning right here with my jack. All right, I do take it down. Uh, I had to go. I had to play, make that play there. I made that play there because I didn't uh, think that they would necessarily have a king in that situation. You can't always assume that they have the hand that beats yours. So you sometimes have to uh, make a play based on the odds. In fact, you always have to make a play based on the odds in poker. All right, 10 jack. Let's go ahead and call and hope they raise. I think he's going to raise right here because he's a pretty aggressive player. And I will play back at him with 10 jack. Okay, let's go ahead and call with 10 jack. Let's see what happens. We've got 10 queen. Okay, so I'm actually dominated here. Not the best of positions for me right now. All right, I had to have caught a 10 right there. So he does end up taking uh, first place right there. 10 jack was a good hand to make that play with, I think. And I was only barely dominated. But, uh, you know, you can do a lot of things with 10-jack. You can get top pair. You can get a straight. A lot of cool things can happen. All right, you finished the tournament in second place. Thank you for playing. I don't know how... Let's see. Click register to register for another sit and go of the same type for 10k play money chips. Or click close to close this dialog without registering. Okay, uh, I'm not going to click close right now because i got my desktop running behind this window. And I don't necessarily want to record that. Of course, I could just edit something in. So let me go ahead and hit close. And see how many chips I won off of that. I don't really know how many chips I won from that. Let me find that out and I'll tell you folks. Okay, I found it. I did a little bit of searching around and I found the uh, payout structure for a sit and go tournament with a 10k buy in here on Poker Stars Play Money Chips. First place wins 38,250 chips, so almost four times the buy in of 10,000. Second place, which was where we placed, wins 22,950 chips, so um, a little bit more than double the buy-in of 10,000, and third place wins 15,300 chips, which is you know, your money back plus another half of the buy-in. So that's how the payout structure works. So we did play second, taking down, 20, uh, taking down 22,950 chips. Hope you folks enjoyed this. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you folks next time.